Welcome to Gigi's World, where it's normally all about dolls, dollhouse, porcelain dolls, Barbies, and all that cute stuff, dainty stuff, and things that are all about princess and girly stuff. But there's another side of my world that some of you may not know. When I was growing up, I had two older brothers and a younger sister. I loved playing with Hot Wheels, Matchbox cars. We called everything Matchbox cars, but I now know there's name brands. But I loved playing with my older brothers and running with them and playing with them. And growing up, my daddy would try to sometimes give us little surprises, and he would normally get me a little Hot Wheel. We lived behind a shopping center that had a Refco discount drugstore. And we could go up to Refco and we could find matchbox cars, probably two for a dollar. And I would go after anything and everything because I had a really good collection of matchbox cars and transformers. And so I knew that that was leverage to be able to get those boys to let me play with them because I had matchbox cars. And we would get mom's plastic tumblers and her big serving spoons and we would get outside because when we were younger we lived on a dirt road. And we would use her serving spoons to dig tunnels and make our little villages and towns and stuff and just get in trouble for taking the dishes outside. But anyway, I still enjoy the Matchbox cars, but then I moved from playing with them to collecting them for certain features, what they were specific to interest that I liked. I'm really um, interested in antique cars and trucks. I've just really always liked antique cars and trucks. And um, my love for Matchbox cars, from playing with them as a little girl to collecting them, actually came about with my daddy being a model railroad enthusiast. He is all about model railroading. He could tell you the history of trains and locomotives. He had um, his own um, model railroads that he built from toothpicks, cardboard, paper. He literally built everything with mountains and villages and ponds and just everything from N-gauge, Z-gauge. I think he wanted to try HO. I think he may have even gotten into HO. I know N-gauge and Z-gauge was small enough to have indoors. But anyway, when I was in college, he was doing a model railroad, a railroad layout, and I was picking with him, and I asked him, we had seen the movie Pink Cadillac with Clint Eastwood Wood, and Bernadette Peters. And I was picking with him, and I asked him if I could put a pink Cadillac on his train layout, thinking he would say no because that pink Cadillac had no place on his train layout. But I was a daddy's girl, and he told me, if we could find a pink Cadillac that was in the right scale of his model railroad, he would let me put a pink Cadillac on his um, layout. So my brother and I were living in Tennessee, and God must have really wanted me to have that pink Cadillac on that train layout. Because my brother and I went to a hobby store one day, and I saw some little cars, and I asked my brother... I said, Glenn, do you know what size, what scale daddy's doing right now? Because he told me I can put a pink Cadillac on his layout if it's the right scale. And he told me, he said, I'm pretty sure he's doing engage right now. I have since learned that when you start at the top of the alphabet, A, I believe, is the largest. And then as you go down towards Z, they get smaller. So HO is bigger than N, and then N, when you keep going down, you get to Z gauge, and that's the really small. So my brother told me he thought my daddy's current scale was N gauge. So we found a pink Cadillac that was N gauge. I can't remember. I think my brother may have bought it for me. Maybe I did. I don't know, because it was at a hobby store, too. So next time we went home for a visit... I took that pink Cadillac home, and sure as shooting, my brother had selected the right scale. That pink Cadillac found its place on my daddy's train layout. Yeah, 
So that was some of my first memories of wanting to get into a collection. Then I really started collecting when I found a limited edition Wonder Woman Hot Wheel. And I'm all about Wonder Woman. Well, I found that car and I bought it and I started to collect them. And lo and behold, I can't find the Wonder Woman car. But anyway, I'm going to show you my collection. It's going to go on this shelf. Let me tell you a little bit about this shelf, okay? The company name on Amazon is Built by Sam. There's a beautiful story about Mr. Sam um, explaining why he makes these, how he makes these, the time invested, and what he's doing. He is a high school special needs teacher in Georgia. And he makes these during his free time after hours when he's not grading papers, doing lesson plans, preparing IEPs in the classroom, in meetings, etc. So he, and while married with a family. Now this is all stuff that he's posted online as far as how this business um, came about, what he's doing to help supplement income. So he makes these things after hours. He, um, when you order he allows you to customize. Um, he advertises that he does 10 display shelves. He makes this top shelf just a little higher to allow for some bigger vehicles. And then these, the way he's got it measured out, it basically on the ones, the people who have reviewed and posted pictures with their displays, basically what it allows for is your standard um, 164 um, scale Hot Wheels. It basically allows for five to go across here. That's when they're not inside the packages because of course you've got the height differential and stuff. So that's when they're not in the package and they're just just displayed you can basically get about five so he has 10 shelves so that would allow for approximately 50 if some of them are longer or whatever then you might only get 40 or 50 or if you want more space between them to display them you might get less on the shelf and then what I plan on doing I've got two larger ones that I didn't pay attention to the scale they're bigger and so I'm going to put them on top because they will fit. He, um, if you can see where it looks like light is coming through, see that little hole? And that little hole, you can see it real good here where the light's going through the wood. He drills holes and he sends you special screws that allows you to mount these um, display shelves on the wall without even needing to um, hang them on studs. So the kind of screws he includes with the shelf just allows you to go straight into your um, sheetrock. And he says he does this because he's trying to supplement his income to pay off student loans. So he's an educator and now he's trying to pay off his education. And I know that feeling because I'm also paying off student loans. So anyway, he um, the way he allows you to... Um, modify is the standard shelf is 10 shelves and I'm trying to think if I get the the dimensions correct it's 18 inches um, long or wide and it's 22 inches long and then he gives you 10 shelves you can choose an 11th shelf if you choose an 11th shelf he has you add extra money. That's on the um, Amazon website. I don't want to give conflicting information because that could change down the road. And somebody might view this video years down the road and wonder about those prices. So he allows you to um, pay extra for an extra shelf. He also, if you notice, when I was picking about these being Venetian blinds, you can see through it. He also tells you that because you're probably going to be hanging this to display it, you don't need a backboard because your wall becomes the backboard. But if you want a wall that matches your shelf, you can customize your shelf and request to add on a back wall, and then he charges you an additional fee for the back wall. 
I think right now, okay, right now, 2020, I believe the extra shelf is $5 and the back wall is $10. Or I might have those descriptions reversed and it might be $10 for the shelf and $5 for the back wall. But those are the two prices for the add-ons. I didn't do either of those add-ons. The final thing he allows you to do, he gives you a list of about six or eight different wood stains, and he allows you to tell him what what color you want your wood stain to be, or if you just want it to be left um, natural with no staining. And I opted for cherry wood because for the most part, I like cherry wood. I go after mahogany and I go after walnut some, but I really love the cherry wood. So that's the shelf. Now I'm going to show you my Hot Wheel collection to date. And then I'm going to mount this on my wall and then I will show you the pictures of the shelf with the Hot Wheels displayed on my wall. Okay? So I organized my Hot Wheels in the years for the ones that are. They're still in their packages right now because I've been collecting and just been putting away so that they don't get all scratched up and stuff. They haven't been displayed. So I've just been keeping them in their packages. But I'm not a collector that will go online and try to sell them for money or anything. So I'm actually going to bust mine out of the packages to display them. I'm not keeping the packages. I'm going to think if I can possibly cut the little tag off that gives you the description with the year of the vehicle and stuff. But I'm not actually going to keep the package because I'm not into collecting and trying to resell where you need the original package and stuff. So anyway, I'm going to start with my oldest vehicle. This is a 1952 Chevy. There might be some glare, so I'm not good how, sure how good you're going to be able to see it, but you can see that big picture. And anyway, of course, I chose this one because I love the antique trucks, the, the, um, the vintage trucks and cars, but my favorite color is purple. So I sort of thought this might be vintage, didn't really pay attention to the year, but it was the purple that got me. So I got my little 1952 Chevy truck. I have a, let me put some glasses on. I have a 1953 pink Cadillac. And the doors open. This just reminds me of something that kids would play with, probably. And it's bigger. It's not the 164 scale. So this is just something that you can play with. And it is a pull back and go one. So, you, I mean, you could play with it. But I'm going to display it on the top of my shelf because um, I don't want it to take up room on the bottom. And then down the road, I might get something bigger and move it. But right now, this is going to be on the top. So this is my pink Cadillac. So... I also have one more large one. This is a 1955 Chevy Stepside Pickup. Love those old trucks. And the doors also open on this one. So it sort of makes you think you want to play with it. And... This one is also one of those pull back and go ones. So I'm going to have them meeting like this. I actually think I'm going to race it and see if I can film it and see if this little pink Cadillac can beat this truck. Yeah, but anyway, I'm going to have them facing like this on my display case. Then I have, there's a Johnny Lightning series, and I don't know about Johnny Lightning, but I have this, and it is a 1957 Chevy Corvette. That's for the nostalgic of it being old. I don't really care for sports cars. I know Corvettes are probably more popular or preferred than a Camaro. Um, I know one of my brothers had a Trans Am when we were um, teenagers. But um, so I like the Corvette. Probably would be uncomfortable riding in one for fear that somebody would feel the need for speed. But I like the Corvette. 
Okay, the next one I have is a 1964, 1964 Ford Econoline van. And the significance of this is the Hostess Ding Dongs. So this one is just hilarious because all of you Grace Baptist Church youth group kids that went on missions trips with um, Mr. and Ms. Goodman or Mr. and Ms. Allen back in the early to late 80s, this was a big hot conversation whenever we would be traveling on the tour bus to get to the different mission field locations and stuff. We had a guy, Scott Legan, he loved eating hostess cakes and stuff. And anytime he was on the bus and we had snack cakes and stuff, he would always ask the youth pastor's wife. And he wasn't doing it to be perverted. It was just funny because it was the name of the snack. He would always say, you want a bite of my ding dong? <laughs> and it was the snack cake. But it was hilarious. And he did it at the Wilds, the Christian camp at the Wilds. He was just always just offering people his snack cakes, but it was hilarious because we kept trying to tell him, Scott, it's the name of the snack cake. It just doesn't sound right. But anyway, he always did that because that he was just nice. So if any of you are following me, viewing this video, and you went to Grace Baptist Church, knew the kids in the youth group, or you went to Grace Christian School and you knew the kids there, then you know Scott Legan, and that's what he would do. The next one is also a Johnny Lightning series. It's a 1969 Chevy Camaro. So I have a Corvette and I have a Camaro. And the significance of this one is, this is my birth year. Believe it or not, I was born in 1969. I just tried to tell somebody that the other day and they kept insisting I was lying and they were waiting for me to tell them the truth. But I was born in 1969. My next one is a 1970 Chevy C60 truck. Now the significance of this, I collect vintage coke. My kitchen is decorated in a vintage coke decor sage green and red with vintage coke um signs and different accents and stuff um i'm all about the vintage coke and i love the the trucks that the antique trucks that they call with the the farmhouse christmas decorations and stuff and the red um antique trucks which i think they're they're like 50s models fords if i'm correct i like those um because I'm actually doing a Christmas theme with the farmhouse um, Ford trucks this year in my kitchen. But another significant thing about this is the 1970 truck. That's when our baby sister was born. So I have her birth year. I'm also going to try to get the older brother's birth years on some vehicles too. Not because they're vintage, but because they're sentimental to me. Okay. Then I have... A 1988 Ford Mustang GT. And once again, it's not the significance. It's not the year or anything. It's that it's the Coca-Cola. And I liked this one specifically because it has the little Coke bottle on top of it. So one of them gave me the vintage truck that I really love. And then the other one actually gave me the Coke bottle. My last one that is dated is this 1999 Dodge Viper. And it was actually in its package until about two days ago when I went to take it out of the bag with all the other Hot Wheels. It just fell out of its package. I guess it had been tossed around so many times it just fell out of its package. But the significance of this, I don't know anything about a Dodge Viper, but the significance of this is it was being promoted as a um, patriotic car um, in a either patriotic car series or a Stars and Stripes series. And anybody that knows me knows that my favorite holiday is the 4th of July. 
So I got this one to represent my favorite holiday. Okay, the next ones I have are more fun, not, not so realistic. This one probably is realistic. This is a Polaris razor. It's a little tiny one. The significance of this one is my brother, I like to think it resembles gators. My brother um, would ride and own a lot of these little ATVs. He would own a lot of the quads. Um, he even built his own um, gator and he painted it yellow and green with a roll cage and headlights and all that stuff, seat belts and everything. He could, I think four could ride. He made it look like a John Deere and he would go mud bogging, whatever they call it, mud bogging and on the, in those trails and stuff and everything. He loves to go up to Virginia to the Hatfield and McCoy trails and um, Carolina Adventure World. And so one year we went to some place that sells ATVs and stuff and I test drove several Polaris's and I almost bought a purple and white Polaris and my brother knew I was serious about purchasing a Polaris when I test drove in a nice dainty outfit with white capris on and I somehow managed to ride through a mud puddle in the back parking lot where I was riding and my brother thought I was gonna have a fit that I got mud on my white capris I'm OCD, so not only did I get mud on my clothes, I got mud on white capris. He thought I was going to have a fit, a meltdown, or something, and I was ready to sign the papers on the Polaris, but I said, let me think about it and pray about it. Can I really invest in that? And, well, one of our friends talked me out of it because she thought it was too dangerous for me. Rebecca, Candace, your mother talked me out of getting it. Jimmy was like, man, why did you have to take that pamphlet and that book and everything to Miss Stevens and let her see it? He just knew his little sister was going to buy that Polaris and Miss Stevens talked me out of it for safety reasons. So I never got the Polaris. But anyway, so those are those vehicles. Now I have some more fun vehicles that are just fun collectibles. I have the Beatles Yellow Submarine. This one, because I love that song, who doesn't like the song, The Yellow Submarines? If, if you know the Beatles, they sing The Yellow Submarine, and I'm not sure right now if I'm correct, but I think they sing I Want to Hold Your Hand. But anyway, that's why I like that one. And then I have this cute little one. It's from the um, Disney movie Dumbo. They've made the Hot Wheel into an elephant and this makes me think of little Haley my little love bug when she was younger and I would babysit her I would ask her what kind what movie she wanted to watch once I put her older brother to bed because Hunter had to go to bed early for school and I would ask Haley what movie she wanted to watch and she'd say and again I wanna watch bimbo and I was like what I want to watch Bimbo. And at first I didn't know what she was saying, but she toddled her way over to her movie shelf and she came back and she was holding the Dumbo movie. When she was little, she called it Bimbo. So this makes me think of Haley. Then I have the ice cream truck. Who didn't, when you were growing up, love to hear the sound of the ice cream truck and run out there to meet the ice cream man to get your ice cream? I know my mom would scrounge together all her money because we couldn't go out and get ice cream if she couldn't give enough money for all four kids. Sometimes we had to hope and pray one of the kids was staying the night with a friend when the ice cream man came around so it was less money for mom to come up with so that we could get our ice cream. So anyway, the ice cream truck. Then I have... Toy Story. I didn't watch all three or four versions, but I watched the, the original and I liked it and I liked Buzz Lightyear and Woody. So, of course, I got the one with 
Buzz Lightyear. And I like the movie Cars. Now, this is lightning, but I actually liked um, this dude. I think he was the, the, the tow truck. I want to say he was Mater. I like him. But when I went to get one, I found lightning, so I got lightning for Toy Story. And now to wrap things up, my final one. I have Beauty and the Beast. Everybody knows Belle is my favorite Disney princess. I did my senior recital in college to Beauty and the Beast. I had to choreograph my own music and Scott Austin, Gala Austin's husband helped me choreograph to to um what is it um splice the the music or um um, trim the music, I guess, edit the music to make it short enough for my performance. And I danced to Beauty and the Beast. I love Beauty and the Beast. I love Belle. So, of course, I had to get Belle. So, anyway, that's my collection. I'm going to go hang my shelf on the wall, and then I will come back and show y'all the display. Okay? Bye! I now have the shelf on the wall. It's hard for me to actually video because I hung it in the hall so I can't get in front of it and give you a full view of it. There it is. But anyway, that's the shelf hanging. I put it in the hall because it's going to have some of my vintage coke and this coke sign is also in the hall and I'm limited to wall space now so this hall goes down to one of the guest bedrooms and the mat the guest bathroom so people can stop and look at the cars so now I'm gonna start putting the cars on the shelf okay so first two up and then the vintage nostalgic brand products my coke and my hostess ding-dongs I think I'm going to space my cars out on the shelves until I start getting more and then as I get more I can start bringing them in as clusters but right now I'm, I think I'm just going to space them out if anybody finds me a Wonder Woman car I really want it okay now I think I'm ready to add the the nostalgic um, movie cars or vans one second okay so I ran into a little problem there needs to be just a tad more depth to each shelf the shelves are made for standard Hot Wheels and Matchbox cars so I'm guessing those are your standards um that ice cream truck barely fit okay and here's where the problem was the yellow submarine would not fit on a shelf because of the periscope so I was going to have the yellow submarine sitting here in the center of this top shelf well Lightning McQueen wouldn't fit on any of the shelves because his truck is just high enough that he can't fit and poor little Dumbo wouldn't fit on the shelf either so I just let Dumbo catch a ride with Lightning McQueen because Dumbo can fly and I think that's a, a car hauler so he's hauling Dumbo so anyway it works but now I'm gonna have to I've got that top space pretty much filled up but this shelf right here is actually designated for your taller vehicles but I've got them in the display cases as I get more vehicles I will remove those out of those plastic display cases and that will allow them to probably move down that truck won't be able to move down any but that van and that car will probably be able to move down. 
So I'm just going to have to be real careful because, like I said, that ice cream truck was a tight squeeze. And then up there, I had to move to that top shelf when I didn't think I was going to. But anyway, it's mine. It's my collection. Check out um, Built by Sam on Amazon if you want a shelf. And if you want something customized, you might have to give him specific dimensions to make those little shelves um a little um, more depth to them. But anyway, I'm happy with it. Bye. I just noticed something about the Beauty and the Beast van. Because the way it's packaged, you only see one side of it. But when I was taking it out of the package, I noticed that it has Belle and the Beast. And then if you turn it around, It has Beauty and the Beast. How cool is that? This became my final display. I moved them and angled the cars so that they wouldn't be really sideways, but sort of at an angle. And I noticed something with the shelves again. The depth is not even on each shelf because as I tried to place that ice cream truck, it would not fit on every shelf. I was limited to where I could put it. I was trying to put it on a different shelf and it wouldn't fit on several of the shelves. So I had to put it on a shelf where it actually would fit. So it was just a tight squeeze to get it there. And then several of the shelves were just a slight bit, tad bit shorter, and I couldn't get him on but like maybe two shelves. But I'm still happy with the end results because they've been in a bag stored away in a closet for a while, and I'm still happy with the end results. And I'm going to, of course, leave Beauty and the Beast on the van that way. And that car right there just for some reason sort of kind of reminds me of the General Lee. And I love the Dukes of Hazards growing up. So I think I need to add me that General Lee car to my collection. I need to add me a Harley Davidson and a Wonder Woman. And I'm not sure what else I've got on my mind. But I just got to be careful with how big they are because this was a tight squeeze for some of them. But I got them all there. Enjoy. Bye.